Are you moving to Iowa City? Yay! I often have people come to town to take a look around if they're considering a move or a job offer in the greater Iowa City area and they always want to know what they should do while they're here. Sometimes decisions about moving to a new community must be made without a whole lot of time and there is a limit to the amount of research that you can do online to figure out what it's really like to live somewhere. So, what should you try to do, see, and eat if you're only going to be in Iowa City for a weekend? Today, I'm gonna to give you a list of suggestions for your itinerary to make the most out of your trip and hopefully give you a good idea of some of the unique things that the greater Iowa City area has to offer. Hi there, my name is Emily Farber and I'm a realtor with Lebbett Crater Realtors in Iowa City. I create YouTube videos all about the Iowa City area and real estate and my videos are designed to help people in their buying, selling, or relocating journeys. If you'd like a PDF copy of my Iowa City itinerary, things to do, see, and eat, you can grab a link down below in the description box of this video. To get there, if you're watching on your phone, all you need to do is tap the title of this video and it will open up. I'm also going to leave a bunch of links to a lot of places and events that I'm going to mention in that description box. So if you are a researcher, have at it to your heart's delight. First off, if you're visiting the Iowa City area, you need to explore downtown. Iowa City's downtown is very pedestrian friendly and full of fun shops, restaurants, and bars. If you're visiting during the summer, Friday nights are especially fun because there is usually live music on the Ped Mall. The vibe for Friday night music series is very chill and family friendly. Another weekly event that I love is the Iowa City Farmer's Market. It happens every Saturday morning in the Chauncey Swan parking ramp. You'll find all sorts of fresh local produce, baked goods, farm fresh meats, eggs, cheeses, local wine, artwork, and jewelry. There's also a bunch of awesome food trucks and street food vendors, so you'll be able to grab breakfast or brunch too. I made a video about the farmer's market and I'll leave a link up above. Iowa City was named UNESCO's third city of literature, making it part of a community of creative cities, including the likes of Edinburgh, Scotland, Melbourne, Australia, Dublin, Ireland, Reykjavik, Iceland, and Norwich, England. A fun way to explore our downtown is to read your way through the literary walk. You can do so by walking on both sides of Iowa Avenue between Clinton and Gilbert Streets while watching for bronze relief panels set into the sidewalk that will introduce you to authors and their words that were influenced by Iowa. You can buy a little brochure for the literary walk tour at Iowa Book and Supply and the Prairie Lights Bookstore. As long as you're downtown and feeling all of the book love, you might as well stop in our public library and take a look. I think the library is a fabulous facility, both architecturally and in the size of the collections. Let me get a little worry off my chest here. I can't possibly mention every place in one video, so I'm really trying to focus on places that offer something unique that you won't be able to find just anywhere. I hate the idea of accidentally leaving someplace out that's wonderful, so I really encourage you to explore and ask for recommendations from the people you encounter in your tour of Iowa City. If you want to stop at a few iconic and popular Iowa City businesses, be sure to check these out. Iowa Book and Supply for your University of Iowa paraphernalia. You need an Iowa shirt, right? Prairie Lights Bookstore and Cafe which is an independent bookstore known for its well-curated collections, knowledgeable staff, and its live from Prairie Lights reading series. Raygun for snarky and hilarious Iowa t-shirts. The Iowa Artisans Gallery is a great place to find handmade American art if you're looking for a special piece. RSVP is another must-stop shop for amazing cards, stationery, and gift wrap from small presses and design studios. I have a friend who sends me cards from RSVP and I love them because they are so unique and kind of feisty. So don't mind my finger edit here. If you love vintage clothing and other non-mainstream options, there's some really good choices downtown 
including White Rabbit, Revival, Regstock, Textiles, and Catherine's. If you have a beer, wine, or liquor fan in your life, you better stop at John's Grocery, Iowa City's oldest continually operated business since 1848 and pursue their beer, wine, and spirit selection. If you have a bit of a sweet tooth, you should stop in the old Capitol Town Center Mall and mosey on over to Sweets and Treats, which is an old fashioned candy shop where you'll find all kinds of candy that you just can't get elsewhere. Also, if you're in the mall, stop at Cookies and More for a cookie and a drink. Personally, my favorite there is the Monster Cookie, which is a gooey delight of oatmeal, chocolate, and M&Ms. When I was a kid, I used to ride the bus downtown on Saturday afternoons, and those Monster Cookies were something that I would spend my allowance money on. Alrighty, let's talk about food and while still being focused mostly on downtown Iowa City. Starting with breakfast, I would recommend the Bluebird or the Hamburg Inn for a classic diner experience. You can also grab great burgers or sandwiches at either of those places too. So if you can't make it out of bed in time for breakfast, keep them on your radar for lunch. The Hamburg Inn is a little bit famous for being a regular stop for presidential candidates during the Iowa caucuses. If you want something that you can eat while you're on the go, Brugger's Bagels makes chewy, fresh New York style bagels. And if you're after a coffee shop experience, there is a lot to choose from in Iowa City, but the grande dame of them all is the Chop House. If you want to take a peek at Coraville, a great place to grab Sunday brunch is Iowa River Power, which is located in a turn of the century power plant on the Iowa River overlooking a dam. After lunch, you could go for a walk on the trail that crosses the river bridge right there. There is a lot of crossover between lunch and dinner restaurants, so you can choose which works best for your tastes and your budget. For awesome sandwiches, give Noto a try. If you like quiet, upscale feeling Italian options for lunch, I recommend Barracini because their lunch specials are priced amazingly well for the quality of the food they serve and it's fancy. So if you would prefer a variety of American style options for dining right in the heart of downtown, I would say Pullman or Mickey's. One of my favorite lunch spots located on an outer ring of downtown Iowa City. They offer super fresh, healthy, and local food is Her Soup Kitchen. For a great place to check out dinner, try Polly Ice Pizza. They are an old school thin crust pizza joint where you can see them tossing pizza dough in their front window. Their sausage recipe is a secret and for good reason, nothing else compares. If you prefer more crust options for your pizza, including Chicago style deep dish, you'll need to buzz on over to Coraville and try the Wigan Pen. If wood fired pizza and unique toppings sound more exciting, you should try Maggie's Farm wood fired pizza which is a neapolitan style wood fired pizza if breweries make your heart sing be sure to try big grove brewery and tap room in iowa city it's housed in a large industrial feeling building with great outdoor space if you're ready to explore more than just iowa city go back over to coraville and belly up at reunion brewery maybe you're in a mood for a hunk of grilled meat on your plate after all you're in iowa right Give the Iowa Chop House or Joseph's Steakhouse a try. Both are upscale restaurants that will impress. But if you're feeling more surf than turf, St. Birch Tavern will knock your socks off with their seafood and cocktails. They're known for their fresh oysters, which I bet you didn't know you could get in Iowa, right? After all that eating, are you feeling like you should get out and move your body a little? A hike is a great way to get exercise and some fresh air. Some popular local hiking spots include Hickory Hill, which is a 190 acre park in the heart of Iowa City that will give you a taste of both Iowa woodlands and prairie. I did a video on Hickory Hill Park and you can see the link for that up above. Some other nearby options are the Woodpecker Trail at the Coralville Reservoir and F.W. Kent Park in Tiffin. There's an easy flat trail that circles the lake at Kent Park and takes you over seven historic reclaimed metal bridges. If you're visiting during the summer, how about renting a boat or a kayak? You can do that at Lake McBride in Solon, which is about 10 minutes north of Iowa City. I made a video all about Solon and I'll leave it up there. 
If you'd like to catch an event worth remembering and you have the time to plan ahead, consider buying a ticket and attending a Hawkeye football game at Kinnick Stadium, a basketball game at Carver Hawkeye Arena, or attend a performance at Hancher Auditorium, the Ingler Theater, or the Coralville Performing Arts Center. Are you traveling with kiddos who need to burn some energy? Here are some things that might interest the younger crowd. The Iowa Children's Museum is a play-based museum that encourages children to learn, create, and explore with the power of play. The University of Iowa Natural History Museum will give you an opportunity to explore a university campus building and learn about the natural history of Iowa while you're there. The McBride Raptor Project is an outdoor facility designed for the study of raptor populations as well as a rehabilitation center for injured birds. The facility is usually open daily for self-guided tours and you get to see eagles, hawks, and owls. The Devonian Fossil Gorge was exposed after the floods in the Iowa City area in 1993 and 98 exposed a 375 million year old Devonian ocean floor. This self-guided tour is a great way for kids to scramble around and search for small hidden fossils. If you need indoor physical activities, two other fun options are the Leisure Pool and Lazy River at the University of Iowa Campus Recreation and Wellness Center and Defy Iowa City, which is an indoor trampoline park. Pro tip, if you're going to the trampoline park at a time that's busy, I would recommend filling out your waiver and buying jump time online beforehand. You won't be sorry. If you'd like to explore beyond Iowa City and experience more of the rural side of Iowa, two fun places less than 30 minutes away to look at are the Atlanta Colonies and Kelowna. I did a video about Kelowna, and if you want to see more about it, catch the link up above. I'll leave some information about the Amana Colonies down below in the description box. The Amanas has a constant supply of activities and events, and not to keep talking about food, but the Amanas is known for German food served family style. Well, I hope I gave you a solid list of things to do, places to go, and restaurants to try while you're exploring the Iowa City area. Remember to grab that printable PDF copy of all of these suggestions by clicking on the download link in the description box. Hey, it's been fun, and I'll catch you later.